to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to recap some information that we recently presented on the do-it-yourself Bedbug dry ice monitor that I have here in front of me. Um, since we aired that story, a lot of media coverage has come out on this monitor, and I wanted to dispel some myths that are starting to grow in regards to this monitor and reiterate some concerns we have about certain people using this monitor. And so what we have here is just that, the do-it-yourself bed bug dry ice monitor. And how it's intended to be used is you take this cooler, you fill this cooler up with dry ice, you then put it on top of this inverted dog bowl, open this nozzle up to release some of the dry ice, and it can be used to help determine if you might have bed bugs in the home that you live in. And so you live in a house, you have some reactions that you can't explain, you've been unable to find any bed bugs, and you want to set something that you think might collect some bugs to help you determine if there's a problem. And that's how this is intended to be used, as a monitor, not a control device, which is being reported by some media agencies, and it's why we're actually filming this episode today. This monitor was actually designed by researchers at Rutgers University, and more specifically, Dr. Chang Lu Wen. And you know, since this information about this monitor was presented at an entomological conference a few weeks ago, a lot of media agencies have covered it as a great do-it-yourself bed bug monitor. And that's all fine, and that's great. But what started to happen recently is a few media agencies, and more specifically one in New York, started to report that this could be set in somebody's home as a control device and possibly solve your problems. And that is not how it is intended to be used. And I know Dr. Chang Lu Wang, and I'm sure that that is not the message that he intended to come across through doing the interview. And so there's some things that we need to recap in regards to this monitor that are very important for people to be aware of. And the first of which is that it is not intended to be a control tool. This will not solve your problem if you have a bed bug infestation in your home. This is just intended to help you determine if you have a bed bug infestation. And I know that that's how Dr. Wang intended the information to be presented. And the story that was run is just very misleading in that it talks about it being a control tool. The other thing is that we've talked about it in our previous episode, and if you want any more information about this, please go see our original episode on the bed bug dry ice monitor. But what we talked about in that episode is how pest control companies really should not be using this monitor inside people's homes. And we're extremely concerned because we're starting to hear rumors of pest control companies doing just that, and that they're using it in people's homes. You know, there are two concerns with this monitor, one of which is that dry ice can be very difficult to handle. And if you don't handle it properly, it is so cold that it actually can cause freeze burns on your skin and be harmful in that manner. And so you need to know how to handle it properly. And in regards to that, there's no real way to secure this monitor when you set it in somebody's home. And so if a pest control company goes and sets this, and then say a child in that home goes and opens this cooler up, there's nothing preventing that child from accessing that dry ice. And God forbid that should happen, that could be a very serious situation in regards to the pest control company and possibly a child being injured. On top of that, carbon dioxide, which is what that dry ice is releasing, can actually be very harmful and potentially lethal to humans if it reaches a high enough concentration in a room. And so if you set this monitor, or say you had a bigger cooler with even more dry ice in it, and you set that in a very small room that didn't have a lot of airflow, you actually could potentially seriously harm yourself, and even it could possibly be lethal. And those are some of the points that aren't communicated in a lot of these media in a lot of this media coverage and a lot of these news stories is that there are some concerns that you need to be aware of and we're just really nervous at this point because we're hearing a lot of pest control companies starting to use this and a lot of people in general and there are some hazards you need to be aware of. That being said, I mean, it is a very good bed bug monitor. We were involved in the study that Rutgers University and Dr. Wang reported on and it can be very effective if it's done properly and safely. But there's just some hazards you need to be aware of. And again, I'm, I know Dr. Wine personally, and I know that the story that was run about using it as a control device was not how he intended that information to come across. And, you know, we just want to reiterate that this, again, is a bed bug monitor. It's to help determine if there's a problem. It is not to be viewed as a control device. Alrighty, everybody. 
Real important information, you know, I hope everybody can get the take-homes from that. That's extremely important because the last thing that we want to see is somebody get injured by using this monitor. It is a great tool, and you can do it yourself. And we do support, you know, the concept of this monitor. We're just a little hesitant that we're hearing a lot of people pick up on it, and we want to make sure everybody understands the hazards associated with it. So if you have any questions about this, please email me, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions in regards to this. And again, I hope to see everybody soon enough.